good evening from texas what's it been since my last upload like four months Jeez, i've been stuck in texas trying to pinpoint a medical issue that they can't seem to figure out so hopefully they'll figure that out here pretty quick and we'll be back on the road southeast asia probably so um in the meantime i wanted to post a video that i've been thinking about for a while now and that's about security clothing and we might as well cover some thoughts and ideas with security luggage while we're at it and uh i guess the main thing that made me think of this video was how many videos on youtube is there of wear this or wear that here or wear this style of clothing there you know but you don't really see much about security clothing itself and i'm talking like pickpocket proof shorts and clothes with with hidden uh spaces inside of for keeping passports credit cards that kind of thing so i want to cover a little bit of that in this video we'll go through some products that i'll show you that you may be interested in and might want to consider um i do want to point out that everything in this video is not sponsored nothing in this video is sponsored i mean i'm going to talk about some name brands such as clothing arts osprey wrangler some companies like that and just wanted to point out this video is not sponsored by any of these people these are just products that i use that you may be interested in so uh let's go ahead and get back here to the house and jump into it okay so let's jump into this so if you go onto amazon ebay whatever and you start looking for ways to carry your passport your credit cards and all that you'll see some things like this pop up um they have some that have a uh, little thing that goes on your belt, hides on your belt, and has a uh, spot for your some cash, I guess, your credit cards. It's got a space in the top to put your passport in or passport slot. This one has a lanyard so you can throw it around your neck and walk through a foreign country with all your valuables hanging from your neck. Y'all don't wear stupid stuff like this. There are so many options out there for carrying things discreetly that look like just normal clothing that have hidden places that uh, keeps your valuables safe so that if somebody approaches you, there's not something obvious like this that they know to go after because everything is hidden. And we're gonna jump into that right now. All right, let's start with a pair of pickpocket proof shorts. These are from clothingarts.com. I don't think you can buy these in stores. I've never seen them in any stores, so I'm assuming that you just have to order from the website. I'll put that in the description. The link to it and so uh, you can get these in a few different colors and you can also get these in pants and so these do offer pretty much the same thing as your standard cargo shorts do you've got some zippered front pockets you got some leg pockets and some back pockets there and what sets these apart from your normal cargo shorts is the added levels of security that these have and so you got your typical zipper that some cargo shorts have really big pockets you can fit a lot in there. And then you start getting into some of these more risky areas where the pickpockets go to work, crowds at night, people bumping into you, that kind of thing. And that's where these come in handy. So you have these little flaps that are buttoned back here. You get this. I'm a lot faster at it when I'm actually wearing it. Kind of on the wrong side of it right now. You get that and you throw it over onto this side of your zipper and that keeps your zipper from being open. Now most uh, pickpockets are looking for easy targets, people that just have open shorts and the big open pockets, you know. And so this deters most of that because they're just looking for something simple and this is just automatically something that's in the way of their work. So that's the first level of security for uh, your basic crowds and pickpockets. You get into some more uh, risky situations, more vulnerable situations, such as sleeping on an overnight bus or a train. And these people have more time to work with something like this. That's not too much for them to figure out while you're asleep. So, uh, so they have some added levels of security inside here. We'll open this up and there is your pocket. And if you pull this back here, you'll see that there's a little flap and there's Velcro there and you can open that up and there's a whole nother pocket and this one is really big as well so if they figure out how to if they figure out that this flap is here then they do have to get through that velcro too without you noticing so 
good extra hiding place there with just another level of security. And something that I didn't even know that these shorts had until I was wearing them for probably a week and a half is if you open the pocket, you'll see this little seam right here. If you follow this seam all the way to the back, you'll find a little zipper and that is an extra pocket and it's a small pocket. You can't fit your whole phone into this or a passport, but you can fit credit cards some cash and things like that inside there. And so even if they can feel that in your pocket, they're not going to figure out how to get into that because like I say, it just kind of blends in. You can't really tell it's there. So pretty cool little hiding place there for some extra things. And we go down to the leg pockets. They do have a couple more levels of security than a lot of normal cargo shorts. If I can get this flattened out here. Anyway, there's a button on each side. So this flap can be buttoned down over your pocket. And that adds a little bit of security there and then it has a pretty tough pull button and so maybe that's enough that you would notice it if somebody really uh tried to pull on it but the main thing is these two buttons here because somebody's gonna have to work with that for a minute while you're standing there to get both of those off flip around to the back the back also has a few extra things to offer also it has the two buttons same as the leg open it up and then it also has a zipper and that's pretty much all there is to get into that pocket. So the fabric that this is made of is some really good stuff. It's high quality. I've had this pair for three years now, I guess, something like that. And they're still not showing any signs of wear. And I've worn these a lot. I've worn these through brush. I've worn these in several different countries hiking around. And still there's no, uh, there's no threads coming out. It's not starting to come undone anywhere. So really good quality stuff. Now, if I had to point out any negatives about these, I would probably say one would be that you can't find them in stores, so you don't really get to try them on. You can return them, but uh, that is one downfall, having to order online when it comes to clothes. Uh, the other thing is the price. These are expensive. These are, uh, I want to say you'll end up paying 125 135 whether you get the shorts or the pants. For a pair so if you wanted a few pair a few different colors a few of the shorts and the pants you would end up adding up quite a bit just to get them but they are worth every penny just the peace of mind is really nice with these when you get into these crowds and some of these places knowing that your stuff is safe the other thing that i would say would be a disadvantage with them is that they don't come in as many sizes as something like blue jeans would so you go to the store to find blue jeans and there's every size imaginable and these are kind of limited. Uh, they do have a pretty big waist size and I think the lengths go down to a 36. And so if you're far one way or another, one length or another, then there is a chance that uh, the might not be able to find a pair that fits you. Um, what I did that I want to point out, if you do have a really long leg, I'm 38, for example, and they only come in 36s. I bought a pair of pants that were 36s and cut them to length to make a pair of shorts. So that is one option if you're not getting the length that you need with your pants is that you could still get a pair of shorts that way. So clothingarts.com, I'll put the link in the description. Feel free to check that out. What about a pair of blue jeans? I grew up in West Texas. I've worn blue jeans all my life. I love these because they are durable. They're tough. They last a long time. They're good for hiking through brush and all that just because they're so thick and so tough. Uh, these are Wranglers. And uh, I wanted a place to hide some things in a pair of these jeans. So this is just kind of an idea I came up with on my own that you may want to consider making. Uh, we have the normal pockets, like any pair of blue jeans right here. And what I did was I got a pair of old blue jeans. I cut the pockets out of it, and I sewed them on to the inside of the jeans on the inside pocket here. And uh, that's starting to come off there. I need to sew that back. But uh, you can see that we just sewed to the existing pocket there. And we have a full-size pocket here. This will fit passports uh, of course your credit cards a bundle of money whatever and so a good hiding place 
just to put things that you're probably not going to need through the day, such as your passport while you're walking around or your main bundle of money. And that way, if uh, something happens with your main front pockets, then you haven't lost your main stash or whatever you got in here. Uh, if you do decide to do this little simple do-it-yourself idea, one thing that you do want to consider that I learned the hard way is you want to put your pocket lower because at first I put it up here and then I found out that when you sit down, that's where your leg crease is like this. And so when I had my passport in here, it was trying to crease my passport. So I ended up taking it off and we moved it down a few inches to where now when I sit down, this is sitting on top of my leg. The passport stays flat all the time. Do keep that in mind if you decide to make these for yourself. Um, the disadvantage to these is that it is hard to get into. Obviously it's inside of your pants, so do consider that. If you're going to the airport or something like that, then you are probably not gonna wanna use this because it's just going to make it harder for you to uh, get your passport out and empty your pockets and all that. So that's something to consider, uh, but as for just a day-to-day -day walking around, it does really well, uh, play, just a simple place to hide uh, some of the things that you're probably not going to need through the day that you don't want in your front pocket. So a little do-it-yourself project there if you're interested in that. So here's an idea for a belt, switching over to belts. Uh, this was, I want to say $24 on Amazon. I don't know what brand it is. It seemed like most... It seemed like most of them was uh, around $24, $25 though. What's unique about this is that we have a little zipper on the back. Can unzip this and what I use it for is getting some rolled up cash, some bills. Roll it up, put it in there and zip it back. And you can fit quite a bit in here, uh, especially with the length of the storage compartment if you line several of them up. So just another hiding place there. Uh, this isn't big enough to fit debit cards or credit cards in. They're too tall. So do keep that in mind if you wanted one for that, that those don't fit. Uh, another thing that I do put in there, though, that you might want to consider is photocopies of my uh, passport and my driver's license. So that way, if I ever lose any of my real IDs, then I at least have a few photocopies of them if I go to the embassy and need to get new ones so something you might consider throwing in there another cool thing about this belt is that it is all plastic on the buckle this means that at a lot of airports they don't require you to take it off so just something else to consider um like i say these are all over amazon 24 25 dollars so you might look at those if you want a uh, little belt with a hidden storage compartment if you want a belt that has a little bit more style to it, they do have a few other options like this leather belt here. I guess this would work for, uh, this one's a little bit worn, but this would work for like a business wear probably or a, uh, or a Western wear probably or something like that. Uh, you can put different buckles on it and all that. And it's the same concept on the back. You have the uh, zipper, open it up, and you have a little storage compartment in there just the same. Um, do keep in mind if you go with one that has the real buckle on it though then you're definitely going to have to take that off at the airports uh, as far as prices on these it just kind of varies just like any other belt it depends on what style you want um, what brand it is all that you can probably spend as much as you want or as little as you want on these just like any other kind of belt. So a few things that you might look for in luggage or a bag as far as security goes is of course the main thing that most everybody knows about is a zipper lock. And you'll see how these zippers here have a hole in it for this lock to go through. And most luggage has these, but a lot of backpacks don't. So if you're looking for a carry backpack, then you might make sure that they do have that on there. That way you can lock your bag up. It's easy for somebody in a crowd to uh, slide these apart and get their hand inside there. So something else that you might consider with getting a backpack is one that has this shell on it and this kind of wraps around it. It's got compression straps so you can really tighten it down. It compresses the bag a little bit, but this also prevents from people cutting your bag in a crowd. So this is a thing. I haven't ever had it happen to anyone that I know, but I have heard of it happening sometimes to people 
where when you are in a crowd, somebody will go up to you with a razor knife and just run it along the bottom of the backpack so the contents start to fall out, they grab it and they run. And so this kind of prevents, this protects your bag a little bit on the sides and then you can see that it has that shell right here on the bottom as well. And then where it is still cloth, such as right here, this is a, I think it said it was a triple layered cloth if I remember correctly. And anyway, the idea is if they run a knife across here, the material just kind of moves together. All three layers kind of move together so that the knife can't go all the way through it. So it just kind of adds a, uh, another level of protection there. So something to consider, you might look at those. This is an Osprey Porter 30. A few other brands also offer this kind of shell like this. And uh, most travel brands will offer some backpacks that have the... Uh, the little eyelets there for your locks so uh, let's move on and talk about locks a little bit so a couple different locks that we have here uh, your two main kinds that you'll see is the normal bolt lock and then a cable lock I carry a full set of each one of these I'll explain why here in a minute but regardless of which one of these you get a couple of things to consider is uh you can get these in a key or you can get these in a combination i always choose combination just because that way i don't have to keep up with a key or risk losing a key and uh one thing no matter what style you go with do make sure that you get a tsa lock you see the red diamond here and that indicates that it's a tsa lock and what that means is that tsa has their own key to this so that if you put this lock on your on your luggage and you run it through checked baggage if you have a normal lock on there that does not have a tsa slot then they will cut it off and throw it away and your lock is trash and your bag is now open and so this allows them to stick their key in there they'll unlock it they'll look at whatever they want to look at and they will put your lock back in place something that a lot of tsa locks don't have that you might want to look for that i really like is a tsa indicator and you see this little red dot here that's a pin and that'll pop up if tsa opens it with their key if they open it with their key and that pops up which it will they cannot push that back down because the only way you can get that down is by putting the code back in and so uh they can't reset it so if they open your bag you know that your bag got opened so not that it really makes much difference but at least you know if somebody went through your bag or not a uh, difference in these two and why i carry a full set of these is because one is just a little bit quicker to use than the other one and the other one is a little bit more secure obviously this one's a little bit more secure uh, if you had a good pair of pliers you could probably snap that off but this one you're gonna have to have a little bit more then a little pair of pliers with some wire cutters on it. So in my normal day-to-day -day running around or going through the airport or walking through town, I'll use these with the cable. Reason is because they are just a little bit faster. So if you're needing to get into your bag real quick, you push that and you just rip it out of the eyelet and it's good to go. And you can just shove it right back through, twist it around and lock it and you're good to go. Um, just a little bit more quick to work with. And then if I am leaving my bag inside of a hotel room or a Airbnb or whatever, I switch over to these just because it's a little bit more secure. So uh, like I said before, it's a little bit tougher to get into. Now obviously if somebody really wants into your luggage while it's sitting in a hotel room, they're going to get into it. But if you're just dealing with somebody that's trying to go into the room and look for an easy target and they see a locked bag, then they may just think, well, I don't have time to deal with that. And kind of a deterrent, so it doesn't hurt to just have a few added layers of protection. Something else you might consider is a bike lock. This is just a normal bicycle cable here with a uh, code on it. And sometimes I will run this through a table and a chair or a bed rail and a chair or something like that and run it through the handles on my luggage. And... It just kind of same thing as the locks it's just kind of a deterrent you know somebody walks in they're looking for an easy target and they see a bunch of padlocks on something and a cable running through there then they might think well that's just too much trouble you know like i said before i know if somebody really wants your stuff they can get it but the harder you make it on them the less likely they are to deal with it 
So just something else that I carry in my bag that you might want to consider throwing in there that uh, sure doesn't hurt to have as an additional level of theft prevention. The last thing I want to show you that you might consider is this little mobile alarm. I bought this just a few weeks ago. I haven't used it yet. Uh, it's got a little flashlight on the end there. But the main thing that this is for is you get this and you pull this out just like that. It's got two prongs on it, and these are on a spring, so they'll try to split when you pull it out. And once this splits far enough apart, an alarm goes off, and it's really loud, so I'm not going to do this on the video. But if you let that go apart very far, it'll uh, sound the alarm off. And uh, you can use this for a few things, like putting this in the door, wedge it in the door of your Airbnb or your hotel or in the windowsill or something like that. What I wanted to use it for that you might be interested in also is I wanted to put it underneath my luggage when my luggage is sitting somewhere. You may just touch your bag and suddenly uh, this goes off and hopefully that'll be enough to make them ditch the scene and leave your stuff alone. So that is pretty much all I have that I wanted to show you all. Just some options y'all might want to consider for throwing into your uh, travel pack. And uh, do go on to the uh, Clothing Arts site, clothingarts.com. The link will be in the description. They do have a few other options also. Uh, I think they have a few pairs of shirts. And then they have, I think they have a pair of jeans also. A pair of jeans that have a zipper on it or something like that. But a uh, link is in the description, so feel free to check them out. And thank you all for watching. And that is about all I have for you on this video. One last subject that I guess I could throw in to... Um, I don't know what that was uh one last subject that i could kind of fit into this video i guess kind of fits into the security a subject would be blending in now when i first started traveling internationally in 2017 i read a few articles that mentioned blending in in foreign countries and i kind of laughed when i read it because i thought you know i'm six foot three white guy how am i going to blend in in some of these places and the more I traveled, the more I realized it's not so much about the style of clothing you're wearing or what you're wearing as it is how you carry yourself. This is just a good example. You know, you walk out of the airport and there's people waiting to scam people for taxis, for example. And so you walk out of the airport and you look around confused and start browsing on your phone. That's you, you look like somebody that needs help. That's perfect for them. And so they're going to come and start bothering you. Go on a trip advisor before you land somewhere. Hey, I'm going to be landing at this airport. Uh, what do I do when I get there? Is there a certain taxi to get? People will answer you. They'll say, yeah, when you walk out of the airport, hang an immediate right and go to the blue taxis, you know. And uh, that way, when you walk out of the airport, you're going with the crowd. You know where you're going and you blend in, you know. And so people are less likely to mess with you because you look like you know what you're doing. You look like you've been there before. You're blending in. And that's useful in several different scenarios while you're traveling. And so always look like you know what you're doing even when you don't. That's kind of a good thing to go by. And so that's about all I have for this video. Uh, if you have not watched my video of my fail-proof method of keeping your finances safe, when you are traveling, then you should probably check that out. It'll come up on the top of the video there. So my next video will probably be coming from a much different looking place on the other side of the world. And so until then, safe travels to everybody. Have fun, enjoy, and I will see y'all on the next one.